fighter who's currently signed with Wasserman. I'm actually interested to know how Martin's gonna fight. Are we gonna see similarities with how George Mitchell fought? They come from the same stable. Yes, they are two completely different fighters. But are we gonna see some similarities here due to the Colts being Daily Perales? George Mitchell was out just last night. We've got another win on an MTK card. So his Colts Daily is extremely busy. And we're gonna see Martin come to the ring shortly. We need to get behind this fighter. A good middleweight fighter. And here he is, making his way to the ring. Martin, the example for him, who really looks up for a fight. The weighing was quite intense. He gets focused when he's fight mode. Doesn't really like to speak to many people. Likes to lock himself away and just concentrate solely on the fight. The coach is actually having a word with me, asking me if I'm ready. I stay ready. You know this. And his opponent of Boxer in fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing the white trunks. His official weight of 167 pounds and two ounces. He's currently undefeated in his campaign with six wins. And two of those wins coming in by way of knockout. And you can hear the crowd excited for Martin, just as we are, the home fighter. Let's see what he's going to do to Constantine. Martin straight in there, straight in there, reaching out with the long jab, just feeling out his opponent as Constantine comes back with the jab itself, not really touching anything. Let's Martin's go. looking to start quickly, hits him with the combinations, the overhand right, pushing Constantine back in. Just be careful not to overthrow the shots. Yes, Martin. But one of Daly Perales' mantras is, you know, he likes his fighters to be spiteful. Bad intentions, he often says. 
you can hear the coach saying body, the body doesn't move. Yes, body. <laughs> See, Martin needs to take his time, don't waste the shots. Make use of that jab. Body shots, combination to Constantine from Martin. Attacking the body and then going to the head. Making use of the jab and the right hand. Constantine's not really throwing anything back, if I'm honest. Just seems to be taking the shots. Which gives Martin then an opportunity to just basically do what he wants with him. Constantine covers up the body well. He keeps his elbows tight. However, he leads his head open for the shots. Takes a deep breath when Martin hits him to the be to the body, to the belly, to the body. And he comes back with the one shot. He hasn't really got any answers. Combination, Martin hits him to the body, overhand right, continues to hit him to the head. Looks like he's in trouble. He looks like a couple of those shots are starting to get through. The coach is telling him to keep chopping downstairs as Martin Foru lays into him, hitting the body, hitting the head, working off that jab, throwing the backhand and there is nothing coming back from Constantine whatsoever. He's just moving out of the way, just surviving. This is round one. I was just saying it's another fighter from Daily Perales, his team. George Mitchell fought him last time and got him out of there. I was saying, I was wondering if I could see similarities between the fighters. Yes, they're completely different fighters, but will we see similarities because they're from the same stable? And so far, I'm going to say no. They are what they are, completely well, different fighters. Well, some coaches actually believe in just adapting to that fighter's style, don't they? Not trying to turn them into their gym style, so I guess it depends on the trainer. Yeah, we know this, but sometimes we can see trends. I can look at fighters and I can tell what gym they've come out from. If, for example, look at the way Caroline Dubois came out in her debut, she looked exactly the same as Lawrence O'Colley. Yeah, yeah. The stance, the, the feet. The in and out, yeah. yeah. The every, style, I yeah. can see that style. But with this, we're seeing Martin Foru being Martin Foru. What do you think Daly saying to him in the corner? Attack him to the body. By the way, I'm only late for this bout because it was a long time getting around the crowd. I nipped outside for a, for a really quick phone call and it was, uh, it's, it's rammed in here. So massive credit to Dean White. It's getting busier and busier still this late into the into the night. So grassroots boxing strong, isn't it? It is indeed. But why are you making phone calls when you're supposed to be working? That's I what I want to know. I do apologize. I'm back. I didn't want to leave it for too long. It's all right. We were doing all right without you. Here we go, he's starting to put that pressure on. I was saying that Constantine really hasn't got any answers. He's got no answers whatsoever. He's throwing back the one shot. Martin Foru is just yes. doing what he wants with him. He's very snappy with his punches as well. I noticed that when I was walking around actually. Yeah, he's quite aggressive. I could see him sort of throwing that left with a nice movement, just kind of side on. You see where he throws it, side on. Yeah, I've spoken to Martin a few times. He just wants to hurt people. Does he, is that yeah. his thing? That's all he wants to do. He enjoys it. Yeah, I've heard from yourself and other people there's a lot of potential with this guy. You can hear his coach saying, mix it downstairs. Yeah, you don't want to be too predictable as a fighter, but he's nice and light on his feet as well, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He's just clubbing him around the ring at the moment, isn't he? He is. It's just, this is such a one-sided fight. Just dealing with that yeah, pressure. Yeah, he's almost in... I wouldn't say survival mode, but he's almost in negative mode already, isn't it? Well, he is. It, I, I mean, it's been like this from round one. He's tried to come back once again with the one shot, the one counter. 
You got to remain focused because even Constantine, after taking all these punches, is still dangerous. These journeymen, just one shot. No doubt. And Daly's very adamant of what he wants here in the corner. Yeah, he, he really cares about his fighter. That's a stable that I've visited and I've seen him train his fighters. You know, there's Boxstar Lion, there's George Mitchell, there's Martin Foru. Uh, Daly's got a, a brother that's a, a YouTuber at King Kenny TV. He's training him for his first fight as well. Um, you know, I think he's fighting in even March or April. And he's very selective about who he has in his gym. Okay. He's choosy about who he, he has as part of his stable. It's not anyone that he'll let in. And he really does treat these fighters like extended family members. So he's that real coach. It doesn't just end in the gym. Oh, it's no. all the time. It's full all time. All the time. It's, yeah. He really cares for his fighters. And I can say that because I've been around it and seen it uh, firsthand. Um, not to discredit any other coach, but you get to know them when you spend time with them in the gyms. And there he goes again. And he's, he's, he's just... And where's Martin from? Originally from uh, Holland. Oh, he's Dutch. Yeah. But obviously, you know, he's a UK fighter. He's a Wasserman fighter as well. I don't know, he's not moonlighting. Obviously, they know that he's on this card. Because uh, he lasts four. No, but you can see why he's signed to a big promoter like that. You can see. Yeah, see he's, he's been with the Wasserman before it was Wasserman. It was just Salem Brothers. So he's originally with them. Um, and obviously their European connections. Sorry to interrupt you there, Daly was just literally saying, hit that body, trust me. It's interesting to see when a coach is adamant with a fighter like that, stick to my game plan. But well, the only reason why Daly stopped boxing is because he had an injury. Um, he comes from a boxing family, he'll quite happily tell you that himself. Um, so he knows what he's looking for. He was a fighter himself. Yeah, I mean, if you have that relationship with your fight, you really know the person that you're coaching, don't you? You really know everything about them. What makes them tick, what annoys them, what makes them happy. I, I get it. We need more coaches like that in the game, don't we? Yeah, definitely. I think there's a few. You know, there's a few coaches that are unsung heroes, for one for a better word, that often don't get the credit. Oh, nice combination there. He's been throwing those combinations since the beginning. And like I said, you know, Constantine has no answers. This is a very one-sided fight. Pearson had a good jab. I think we're seeing a, the nicest, snappiest jab tonight, aren't we, so far? Yeah, I like the way... He, and the I right like, hand quickly yeah. follows after him. Yeah, Sorry. I like the way he puts his shots together. I'm echoing exactly what you're saying. I think Constantine now is really just trying to get his respect with these wild overhand rights, isn't he? But there's no respect from mine. No. What he's doing there is what he likes to do. But what I want to see, I want to see Martin start to step up with his next fights as well. Um, challenge himself some more. The super middleweight division, there's plenty out there. And the corner screaming to the body as well here. You see Constantine just throws that one shot back. I think the corner are happy with the work, but they just want that more to the body now, don't they? They want the variation, they want to mix it up. Maybe they feel like they can, they can take Constantine out. Ref having a quick word about the old elbows. I think Martin's throwing the one or two shots to the body, but he's concentrating on that head. It's just like he wants to, he just wants to get him out there. Yeah, 100%. And we all know sometimes you've got to set it up. And this is a six round fight. He's definitely, constantly definitely knows he's got power because every time he hits him with a hard shot, he moves and he moves and he moves. And he takes a, a lovely deep breath as well. That was a nice combination, that. What I like about him is the right hand follows very quickly after the left. They say speed kills. Fast hands is always good to have. There you go, he's getting to the body a bit more now, isn't he? Yeah, that's what we want to see. Everyone's shouting it long enough. He's got real stamina, you can tell with his physique. He's got real strength and stamina, hasn't oh, he? He's been yeah. thrown all round every round. Yeah, nice high punch output, definitely. 
down to the old school conditioning drills that they do. They don't have SNC, they do old school SNC as in the running, the bag, you know, the sprints, the hill sprints, uh, core work. Oh, he just wobbled him with that left there. It was only a touching shot as well. And that's, that's the thing with these journeymen, it's actually really hard to get behind that elbow and to dig that body shot in because they're, they're so prone to covering up so well, aren't they? Yeah, Martin Zapp relaxes, waving out to his fans in the audience. It's almost like a walk in the park. You know Daly, what do you think Daly's saying to him now? He's, going, he's, he's saying what he's been saying for the first few rounds, go to the body. He wants him to break him down. Because obviously he knows that's how George got him out of there as well. So he knows what will hurt him. This opponent has been seen before. It's interesting the dynamic between a trainer and a fighter, isn't it? Because you've got a fighter that sees someone in there, they wobble them with a headshot, and the trainer's screaming something different. So the fighter's thinking, I'm going to... Do you know what I mean? Sometimes fighters might think, I've got him. But the trainer has that third eye view that you say, don't you? It's all about that third eye. They can see what you can't. It's just like a responsible parent that knows when you brought someone to the house that they don't like, that's going to be a bad friend for you. They've got that third eye. They've got that instinct to say, nah, that's the wrong one. Can relate to that one. Here we go. That punch output is so high with Martin. And now he's starting to go to the body. You can hear his coach saying, better. But he instinctively Still just goes really for the Still really nice head. and light on those feet, isn't he? Yeah, well? he is. Yeah. And he, he throws the, the hand so loose. You know, there's no stiffness in his shoulders. Huge credit to Constantine as well. He's still hanging in there after taking multiple heavy shots. Nice. Good shot. Good shot. We'll salute to all of these guys. But he... He's, he's got no answers. I saw him put up more of a fight with George, even though George got him out of there. Yes, that Taking left right's nice, been there yeah. all night, hasn't it? It's been there all night long. He's just attacking him. As soon as he comes in, I mean, can you imagine just getting continuously punched like that? The left, the right, the left, the right, continuously. Let's go, champ! He's really absorbing them, isn't he? I think this is the perfect kind of fight for someone like Martin for because he's clearly above this level, but it's, yeah. it's a case of all the stuff that you practice in the gym, I'm guessing, that you, you put into this fight night and you practice before you get to the big stage. Absolutely. You want to be prepared and not be found out when you're there, don't you? Yeah, you're right. And you talk about Constantine, you know, absorbing these shots. He's going to be absorbing some paracetamol tomorrow morning. Yeah, and I think I, I think we have to give a huge credit to everyone that's involved in grassroots boxing because without this platform, you don't get to practice these things. You don't get to go against these tough guys. Do you know what I mean? These and are some of the toughest guys you're going to face in your career. You might face more skillful boxers when you hire up, but these gentlemen are really, really hard to get out there. Do you know what I mean? Really hard to apply your work. And they need to stay in there because they need to come back in a few weeks to be able to fight again. This is their living, you know? Daly told me about his brother. His brother was a really good boxer, but because he couldn't get the matches all the time, he became a journeyman because it was a regular paycheck. You know, there's so much more to boxing. Martin's what I would call a heartbreaker boxer. He's somebody that's just always in your face throwing and he just mentally breaks you after a few rounds. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Pressure he just fighter. doesn't go away, yeah. Everyone. Yeah, he is literally, Constantine is literally just surviving. Very, very one sided fight. That doesn't feel like it was six rounds. I think it was a four rounder. Should we were told it was six, but yeah. it was a four rounder. But regardless, fantastic work for yeah. Martin. And I think we do want to see him on against uh, another challenge, a better opponent. Yeah, I think he's ready for that step yeah, up. Yeah. Time to step up. Never underestimate the, the power of a tick over fight, something that's going to allow you to sharpen those skills before you go to the next level. It's very important. Absolutely.
like you said, this is the grassroots. This is where it all starts. This is where it all grows. This is where you get your experience. Almost time to go to the scores at the door. And then over to Melissa for our post-fight interviews. What a tough man, Constantinos. There's not really too many marks on his face either. I'm sure you guys as well as us are really excited to see what's about to, what's going to come in the future for Martin for him. <laughs> 